Welcome back to another roundtable. My name is Adam and welcome to our roundtable. We are in a new place. It's a new office. Maybe one day we'll give a quick tour about it. Uh, but beside me, I have Ruzman. Hello. And we have a very, very special guest. His name is AK. AK. All right. Welcome, AK. Thank you. All right. So for those who don't know who AK is, he is a legend in the Singapore retail investment scene. And he's been around for many, many years. Uh, when was the last time I, I saw you, man? <laughs> uh, a few years ago. A few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for those who don't know, AK likes to be very, very private. Uh, he's always, when he appears on screen, he's wearing his getup. So you, he, 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 you don't know how he looks like. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, he just wants to keep his privacy. Yeah. Uh, but the reason why he's a legend is because uh, he is the author of this uh, blog, and it's been around for many, many years. And it's called A Singaporean Stocks Investor, ASSI. We'll put a link in the description as well. And he's been an author for that for many years. And he's a very successful dividend investor. All right. Yeah. So correct me. Let me know if my, my figures are correct. Last year, you made over $200,000 in dividend income alone. Yes. That's right. Okay. So today we're going to ask AK, you know, how he invests, what he's, uh, yeah. you know, his philosophy behind investing for those who don't know him, uh, for those older investors, I guess you kind of know AK before. So welcome AK once again. Thank you. All right. So I think the last time we did something like this was uh, back in <laughs> 2016. If you remember AK. Oh, yes. It was uh, at very all. uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Small table. Not a big table like this. Small room. It was yeah. a room meant for two, but I had to squeeze in the back as a third person. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was actually a webinar we did for for, for uh, some of our members, and it was in our old office. Yeah. It was just like basically a cubicle, and it yeah. lasted an hour plus. More than an hour. Session, more than yeah. an hour. <laughs> and you were there as a special guest as well, and we were talking about dividends at that time. Yeah. Uh, and we've well, we've come a long way, I guess. Uh, bigger table. I hope it's more comfortable for you. Bigger table. Nicer chair. It's bouncy, yes. You're bouncing. Good chair. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to ask you, you know, what, how have you been over the last, you know, uh, recently over the last few years? Last few years? Yep. Uh, last few years, uh, I've been retired for almost eight years. Uh, three more years, I can get my CPF now. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking forward to that? Nah, I want to just leave my CPF savings alone. I, I don't need to draw on it. I don't think I need to draw on it. If I need to draw on it, then something very wrong must have happened to my investment portfolio. Yeah, so just leave, leave it. So How's, yeah. How's your retirement? Yeah, eight years. Eight years. Oh, this past eight years, fantastic. Uh, I would encourage anyone to try early retirement if they... Or if you have been thinking of early retiring, uh, 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 retiring... Uh, uh, much uh, earlier and, and if you have the resources don't be fearful do it you know, unless you enjoy your job then if you enjoy what you are doing then don't quit because if you enjoy something at work you know, then it's not work yeah, but if you don't enjoy your job and then you're just going to work every day and you think that, oh money is not enough you know, I would encourage you to, to sit down take a look at your finances if you have been very prudent financially and uh, you might be surprised you might be able to retire earlier than you think but you must have a list of things you want to do in retirement uh. yeah. you know, if you don't have anything you want to do in retirement then you retire and you feel bored you know it's worse then what's the point you know? I think uh, nowadays there's this thing called Fire. I don't know if you heard about it. F I R E. <laughs> I only learned about fire after I. Did, after you did after it yourself. I fired, <laughs> after I fired, I learned about fire. So a lot of people nowadays they, they go look at. I mean they, they want to do the, basically what you're doing. Yeah. You no know, F I R E fire financial independence retire early. Yeah. Uh, you've done it for eight years, yeah. and I think I think you're a real life example of someone who's taken the time over the last decades. I feel. And you're still relatively young, I would say, okay? Uh, uh, but you've taken the time over the last two decades to basically build up a portfolio that has allowed you to fire uh, since eight years ago. And you're not, you know, you're, not, you're not investing in anything fancy like crypto or any, any of those hype, hyped up stocks. You just do a formal investing, dividend investing, basically. And this allowed you to create a result where it's, you have to over $200,000 in dividend income just last year alone. Mm. Next year, you're going to have another 200000 as all things equal, correct. Mm, mm. And I think a lot of people who are watching that will be really interested to know 
how you did something like that. It wasn't because you had a large inheritance or anything. You just basically no. built it over years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's uh, I started blogging in two thousand and nine, okay. right? Okay. Um, but the entire journey started when I first became a working adult. That's almost thirty years ago. Wow. Right. Mm-hmm. So back then I was trying out different things. I wasn't always just investing for income. I also did some trading, mm. and in my blog I actually talk about trading. You know, uh, trade trading the stocks, and that was pretty good. Right? I made about maybe half a million dollars over a ten-year period nice. trading. So, but trading stocks are very stressful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to keep looking at the prices, and then you must read the charts. Uh, and chart reading is not crystal ball gazing. Uh, you, 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 it doesn't give you hundred percent results. You know, sometimes you lose some money, sometimes you make some money. So it's pretty stressful. Then uh, the global financial crisis came. And there was uh, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, and uh, that time, of course, there was aggressive interest rate decline mm-hmm. uh, trying to stimulate growth and all that of course we have had very low interest rates for like 15 years right before the last year where interest rates went up a lot and um, that was when I became very uh, interested in investing in REITs right so which of course naturally benefit from low interest rates environment uh, and it generates an income very good income mm. and if you got into REITs in during the global financial crisis you could easily get 12 percent 15 percent yield mm. yeah a year, um, yeah daddy. yeah and and that was a big help mm. right if any investor for income that would have been a big help right so uh that gave me a leg up that was how is uh that sped up the whole the whole process to early retirement because of the financial crisis like you just really went in hard during that yeah period. it was a huge opportunity yeah huge opportunity i think we talked about this before mm-hmm. you know and uh, of course that was when i became a very big investor in aims apec at that time was aims amp capital industrial REIT. Mm-hmm. yeah it was uh, back then it was really cheap and then it was a double digit distribution yield i mean it wasn't the only one uh, it's quite a few yeah. Right, but over the years, I've divested most of them, and uh, I've uh, kept only what I thought is uh, uh, the best. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I mean, we've been following you for many, many years. Uh, I mean, we've noticed how your dividend income has grown over the years. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's been, it was at one point maybe a hundred thousand a year, and it was one hundred fifty thousand. Now it's two hundred thousand. <laughs> so the results speak for themselves. Um, at the same time, you were mentioning re, uh, you know, interest rates mm. uh, affecting your REITs and all that. So recently, I mean, everyone knows that inflation and interest rates have gone up because of the post-pandemic situation. So how has you know, the rising interest rates actually affected a portfolio like yours? Because you're more of an income investor. I would assume that the stocks that you pick are a bit more resilient. Have you know, the, the macroeconomic uh, events affected your portfolio? Um, the thing is, we cannot expect things to stay the same forever. Also, even though I went in big on REITs, um, over the years, I moved, started to move away from REITs. I p- put more money into non-REITs. You know, uh, REITs pay, the, I get the dividends from REITs and I invest the money in non-REITs to m- start shifting away because it was too heavy in REITs. And uh, anything that's too concentrated um, that in itself is a risk, is concentration risk. So, like, um, I first moved into the banks in 2016. That was in DBS. It was the first time I put money in DBS. And I grew that position over the years. Then they turned on OCBC. Then during the COVID pandemic, I got into UOB. So I have invested in all three local banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea is interest rates couldn't stay low forever at 
at almost zero percent, the only direction it could go was up. Uh, and that was when, if remember back in 2016, I said, you know, I, I would avoid bond funds mm. and long-term bonds because when interest rates eventually do go up, the bond prices will drop. Yeah. And um, in the last few months, we saw how that has affected some of the regional banks in the US. You know, they were holding long-term bonds, long-term treasuries, and uh, as the value has gone down, that affected the balance sheet. So you really want to invest as a, an investor for income or any investor who think that dividend has a role to play in their portfolio. Uh, invest in uh, businesses with strong balance sheets and they have the ability and the willingness to pay you a dividend. Yeah. And basically that's it. So are you fully out of the REITs and then you're fully into uh, no, no, banks? No, no, no. If you look at my updates uh, in my blog, uh, I, up, I tell people about um, my largest investments and uh, I my largest investment in a non rig now is in OCBC mm. um, but the second and third if I remember correctly would be two REITs so I'm still in REITs I see. but I'm very selective I, I, I'm only invested in REITs which um, I think have strong balance sheets uh, and uh, are still able to pay me a dividend, a meaningful d dividend uh, o over time. Yeah. I'm not totally out of reach. All right. So um, I think a lot of people here, I mean, recently, I guess with low interest rates over the last, I guess, 15 years, like you said, a lot of young investors nowadays, when they look at something, uh, they get into the market, they look at the sexy returns. <laughs> right, you know, like stocks that could, no, right now it's AI. AI stocks are just going up like nobody's business. Before that was, uh, what was it? Uh, metaverse metaverse yeah there was one as well yeah. as the, the, his, the, the history just keeps repeating itself um, why haven't you like gone into growth stocks or maybe not even growth stocks but basically some of the you know out of outside of dividend why is it that you focus on dividends because dividends they are more predictable okay right and uh, this applies to people like me, you know, uh, retirees or people are considering retirement, they're planning for retirement. You want to see predictable income, right? If you invest in something that, will, that doesn't pay you a dividend, but it, it says it's growing, um, you really must have faith that they, it will grow in the right way, right? So... If you invest in a business that tells you, oh, don't worry, we are not making any money, but we are growing. <laughs> uh, I think you, have, you must have a lot of money in order to take that risk. Okay. It is risk, mm -hmm. right? So if it doesn't deliver, it's gone. Your money is gone, right? So if it has a PE, you really have you know, price and uh, earnings. You have no earnings and P-E ratio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's no P-E ratio. Right? <laughs> right. So even if, if it's making money, then it's making very little money. And if it's, you must see from a point of view of a, an, a serious investor, you want to look at valuation. So if it's a P of 100, mm -hmm. right? P alone tells you only part of the story. If you say it's a growth stock, that's why it's 100 times P. It's a growth stock. So 100 pound P makes sense. Oh, it's growing. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. You want to look at PEG. PE to growth ratio. So if you say it's a PE of 100 times, if it's growing at 100% per year, okay, Peter Lynch will tell you it's fairly valued because then you have PEG of one time. Yeah, but if it's not growing at 100% per year, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if you're young, you have time on your side, right? But money not that easy to make, you know. <laughs> Don't just throw your money, you know. Just like that, like that. Like yeah, that. If you're yeah. making like a million dollars a year, okay, like you can throw a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a like year. That, like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so if if you burn uh, some of your hard-earned money, uh, you, you really feel the pain. Okay. But if the money is easy come, easy go, then yeah. maybe you don't feel the pain, uh, You know, that's why when interest rates were almost zero, right? Mm -hmm. In many investors, oh, never mind, take your time, you know, grow your business, get market share, don't make money, never mind. Nowadays, you don't find investors like this because money has a real cost to it. Mm. 
I invest, I want to see earnings, I want to see income, I want to see payback. We don't have, no, forget it. That's why so, so many start, startups are having problem now. Okay. Right? Your growth stock have gone ke belakang pusing. <laughs> Which means uh, they have U-turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, growth Go stocks, growth stocks are yeah. not growing, it's all shrinking. Many of them are shrinking anyway. So yeah. would you say that, I mean, what you say, you know, maybe someone who's older or retiring may prefer a, a portfolio like, like yeah. yours. Maybe if you're younger, take a bit more risk, but you've never been like that. You've always, I mean, I know you were trading for a period of time, yeah. but after that, you just like 100% focused on- No la, no la. Did you say that? Not 100%. Or or 90%? I, I'm, I'm human, you know. Okay. I like to make, I like to punch once in a while. Okay. Yeah, so sometimes, get itchy fingers, ah, you know, punch. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I, I share this pyramid in my blog, right? You know, at the top of the pyramid, right, the tip is the letter S. That stands for speculative position. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if your pyramid is like this, and at, right at the bottom is your cash and cash equivalent, then investment for income, then investment for income and growth, then investment for growth, then the speculative positions. Mm -hmm. Right, and some people will say that the growth stocks are also quite speculative. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice for that speculative segment in terms of percentage of the portfolio usually? That right? depends on how comfortable you are, no? Okay, so yeah, some people would have like an upside down pyramid. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. that would be very unstable, very right? Unstable, so the cash right? position is very small, oh, but yeah. most of it is speculative. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if you are invested mostly in a uh, stock that is supposed to be a growth stock, doesn't pay a dividend, mm. doesn't really make much money, then that might be an upside down pyramid. Yeah. 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 And I, 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 we were having a chat before this as well. And the reason why you were into dividends is because y you, you say you didn't really like to do research. Like if you had to do it, look at growth, you had to do a lot of research, a lot of analysis to find out whether this stock is going to make it. No la. But if you can do dividends, it's a lot easier. No la. <laughs> Adam already la. Where I got say like, like that? I okay. didn't say like that. One. <laughs> okay, what you say then? No, anything also must do research. Okay. But, but the less thing is, research. <laughs> No, okay. When you read, when you do research for growth stocks, it's probably different different from doing research for, uh, D, yeah. Okay. The thing is, as an investor for income, your focus is on income. Mm -hmm. As an investor in growth stocks, you are more interested in the potential, future capital gains, and all that kind of thing. Uh, that I find a bit unpredictable, mm -hmm. right? Investing for income more predictable. Yep. It's very comfortable, very, it's comforting. The risks are lower. Yeah, comforting. The risk of you, okay, even if you have years when that stock doesn't do very well, but it has the ability and willingness to pay you, that stock, that investment becomes safer over time. Mm. Yep, yep. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're taking in the, the return upfront. Yeah, yeah, they're paying you. Every year. Yeah, but if you invest in a growth stock that doesn't pay you a dividend, mm then you really have to bet on it the being finance. able to do well over the next 10 years and maybe become a what, five, five bagger, 10 bagger or 20 bagger. And, the, and okay, I'm not saying that that's a wrong way of doing it, right? The thing is that that is what you call the sexy way of making money, mm. yeah. right? Voila, you make 5% per year. I want to five times, 10 times my money in one year. Yeah, <laughs> that's what most people would say. Yeah. 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 No patience. Yeah, yeah. No patience. So I always say three words that start with the letter P, right? You want to be prudent, financially prudent with your money. Money is very hard to make, mm -hmm. right? When you have a lot of money, you can start throwing away some money, la, if you want to, la. <laughs> up to you, right? But not in the beginning. You know, I was bringing my own lunch to work and everything, you know, I, I uh, very stingy, la, you know? Yeah. You know, hard to make money. Right? I was holding three jobs at one time for a few years, you know, that kind of thing. Right? Uh, what well, prudent. Then, second one, be patient. Patient, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah be patient. You know, even you go and buy a HDB flat, you don't expect the price to go up 100% in the next few years. Right? You know, you, that kind of thing. Even after five years, MOP might not go up 100%, right? that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Many things, you need time. Yeah. And then the third thing, be pragmatic. That's very important. Any kind of in investor, don't be too optimistic. Don't be too pessimistic. Be pragmatic. Okay. Yeah. So like realistic in a sense. Uh, realistic in a sense, yes. But pragma pragmatism is, you know. What works? 
if you have a hundred thousand dollars, for example, and there is a stock that say, "Wow, this stock good, ah, tokong, I like, ah, and everything," you dump one hundred thousand dollars into the stock. On top of that, borrow money, dump even more money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we heard stories like that. Yeah, we see on YouTube, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Yes, some yes, people yes. like this on YouTube, yeah. Dump money, borrow money, dump even more money. Then the stock from three hundred dollars drop to below hundred dollars. I'm not saying which stock it is, huh? Oh, so obvious. Oh, very obvious, <laughs> huh? no very obvious. Uh, <laughs> then margin call. Oh, okay. sell stock, lose money. You One know, how? Yeah. yeah. Then that's being too optimistic, but you also don't want to be too pessimistic. So you so the stock dropped to below hundred dollars, you know seventy dollars, can buy some lah. Mm -hmm. That kind of you know, you look at valuation, you know. Uh, so all investments are good investments at the right price. No, I say one. Peter Lin say one. Is that your stock recommendation? No, I don't have that. You didn't mention any stock name, by the way. I don't have that stock. <laughs> I mean, we did mention some names. I mean, from like you said earlier, I don't have that but stock. again, there's no recommendation to buy or sell anything. Yes, yeah. It's just purely your your thoughts. I'm, talk and I'm talking to myself. You're talking to yourself. <laughs> uh, and you mentioned like just now when you know you buy a particular stock, even for a dividend stock, sometimes it doesn't work out, right? Uh, but you get paid sometimes. You pay, you get paid along the way. But some stocks do not work out, even though they could be boring dividend stocks. How many stocks do you hold in your portfolio to kind of like diversify? Your, your risk in a sense. To build on what you say just now, some stocks which pay dividend regularly, they might actually stop paying dividends. Yeah, yeah. that happens. That happened with a particular stock that I had. Uh, during the pandemic, they stopped paying dividends. You know, uh, which is why the pandemic taught me a few things. And one of the things is that you really want to invest in a business that has a strong balance sheet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a stock could have been paying you regular dividends because of leverage. You know, then when uh, something like a COVID-19 pandemic, which was extreme, you know, for two years, it was, it froze everything. Um, if the in business doesn't have a strong balance sheet, it might have to stop paying dividend in order to repay its debt, reduce its gearing level and stuff like this so as a income investor we for peace of mind we would also want to look at balance sheet strength yeah this kind of reminds me of this stock called sets i'm not sure whether you're referring to the same one because the pandemic kids and the uh, flights yeah. all got stalled right and then they have to stop paying the yeah, i mean sets sia sia engineering they are all yeah. all in the same kind of category same basket industry, yeah. You know, yeah yeah so let's say if let's say SATS has been for many years, one of the most consistent dividend payers. Yes. Uh, and the one off event like uh, the pandemic basically just, just messed up this business. Yes. What would you do in a, that kind of hypothetical situation if you own the stock like uh, SATS? I, I did have SATS. Okay, so it's not hypothetical. So what you no. do? <laughs> and I also own Centurion. Also, I mean, I don't own, I mean, I also have invested in Centurion Corporation. Okay. I mean, it is, it, both of these stocks, they stop paying Dividends. dividends. Yeah. So what would you do? Yeah, the dividend. You know. The thing is, if you have confidence in the business, you would hold. Okay. Yes. And hope that after the crisis is over, they would resume paying a dividend, mm -hmm. because a crisis is um, temporary, right? Unless something has structurally changed, then it becomes a permanent issue. Um, but if it's a temporary situation, then after that situation has passed, then the dividends could resume. If you are confident that would happen, then you hold. And I did hold. Mm -hmm. uh, but in both cases, it didn't turn out the way I thought okay. it, they, they should turn out. So I sold my investment in sets. Mm -hmm. I especially did not like the fact that they had to raise funds to the buy WFS. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I saw my investment in sets, but I, I had a good outcome because I've been investing in sets for many years. I first got into sets because they bought over SFI, uh, Singapore, Singapore Food, Food Industry, and I yeah. was an investor in SFI. Mm. I really like SFI uh, because they stable. Right? Yeah, they, they supplied food to the Singapore Armed Forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Very, a lot of hungry boys there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really like the pineapple cakes. You know that okay. they, SFI they <laughs> make very good pineapple cakes. They were selling it in the petrol station for one dollar each at one time. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, really good business. Mm -hmm. Predictable. Mindef's good, a good paymaster. 
<laughs> yeah, so then some people might disagree with that. Uh, those uh, serving NS. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the people now shouldn't complain, you know. When I served NS, my pay was less than two hundred dollars a month, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, how can the people now? Now these youngsters are really, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really good life now. And the helmet, uh, you look at the helmet, so light, you know. The boots are so light. Last time, my 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 leather boots are uh, the. <laughs> so stiff you know even the back one more tender than the leather you know and the helmet had two linings you know there's one plastic and one metal lining on the when, when you run uh, the plastic the 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 map 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 after that you couldn't hear anything you know okay yeah how can complain and now this are the uniform so light and airy last time we had canvas for uniform really canvas you know you don't serve ns1 you don't laugh which is true. <laughs> yes. Uh, just now, Yuing Lang say what? Go to war, must defend him as a civilian. <laughs> oh, oh, peace, law. You see him in trouble, uh, you run away. Help other people first. This one, no need to help one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this one, we cut out. <laughs> no, we go put it in. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah. so I, I bring it back to the discussion. I mean, for those who are watching this right now, I think they might notice that a lot of the, the companies that you mentioned are actually Singaporean companies. Yeah. Are uh, you still exclusively focused on Singapore? Yes, and of wh course. Wh why is that? Because I'm not rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I have millions and millions of dollars or billions of dollars and then I, have not in, you know, I cannot find where to park my money in Singapore, then I have to look elsewhere. You are considered a high net worth individual according to the Singapore definition. Uh, that's what the banks would tell me because they want me to park my money with them and buy their products. <laughs> you think they really care? Have you ever bought any of those products? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in my younger days. Okay. Yeah, what well, this unit trust good law, that unit trust good law, all lost money. Neon. Okay, so does, is that the reason why you decided to just do it yourself? Frankly speaking, anyone can do it himself. Or herself, yeah. Or herself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah not sexist. I like your statement. If AK can do it. If AK can do it, so can you. <laughs> really? I, I, I don't have a pure finance background. I do have a diploma in business. Uh, my first degree was an academic degree, it's not even a professional degree, right? And uh, I'm self-taught. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if you really want, just pick up a few books, read. And these days, you people are so lucky. You have blogs, you have financial websites, you have reputable YouTube videos and the not so reputable ones. <laughs> Be selective, huh? Yeah, so ju not just because you see a YouTube and that person inside talking is a guru, uh, not true. Leh. Sometimes it can be a gundu. <laughs> <laughs> guru versus gundu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so be careful, uh, you know. The, the world is a big ocean with sharks inside, uh. not just a pond now uh, with guppies. You know. Okay, but yeah. you, did, you, did, you did figure it, figure it out for yourself. You, and over I think time. Over uh, time. And over time. I think it is, your story is kind of like consistency beats intensity in the sense. Would you say that? You consistency? Wow, very, very chim, like what you mean? Being, being more consistent, you know, is, is better than being intense in something. Because I, I guess some people would, would say, you know, they will look for the, the quick returns, but you were not interested in that so much. You will want the consistent results over years and decades. I think it's very hard uh, to say whether you can have a consistent result over years or decades uh, without making changes. Okay, so you have evolved. Yeah, of course. Okay. So if you look at my portfolio from being maybe 90% in REITs, yes, evolved and now it's more like 50% in REITs. So there's a big change mm -hmm. over yeah. the years it shifted. Yeah, so don't think that we have a portfolio that generates income for us and that's it, we throw there and it's, it's there for good and it will take care of us for the rest of our life. If, you're, if you are not interested in that portfolio, that portfolio won't be interested in you, mm -hmm. right? So from time to time, you still have to look. So which is why uh, I, I said uh, just now that investing for income is not necessarily um, easier than investing for growth. It's just that you're looking at different things. Mm -hmm. And that suits you better? It sits with you better? I think it suits many people, mm. many people, because most people cannot take volatility. 
That's true. Yeah. Most people cannot take volatility. They go in with the idea that they're going to make money. Mm. The price goes up, very happy. Price goes down, panic. panic. <laughs> Sell. Price go up, charm la. I sold at how? Quickly buy back. Price go down, ayo, I made mistake. Sell. So most people cannot take volatility. This one I agree with our minister, Taman Shamugaratnam. Okay. But of course, he's not a minister anymore. Okay. So yeah. president, <laughs> maybe. Elect, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So it's true. So that's why when he says that the CPF, which paid, which pays a 2.5% to 4%, if you are older, 5%, 6% per annum, is very good. I agree. Consistently being able to get a 4% return per annum is not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. You give the money to a fund manager over 10 years, if he's able to give you 4% per annum consistently in your pocket, compounded, and it's compounded, CPF is compounded. Yes, it is. Yeah. You have a very good fund manager. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not easy. Okay. So I think for those who have watched this, uh, I guess, interview with you all the way up to here, maybe they will be asking you, is there any particular company that you're looking at <laughs> right now? I, I don't have any favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have any favorites. As an investor for income, I'm interested in any business that is able to pay me a meaningful dividend year after year. And they must be willing to do it. They might be able to do it. If they're not willing to do it, then there's no point. Right? Uh, and with the money that they give me, pay the money that they pay to me, I will be able to reinvest. And as an early retiree or as a retiree, whatever, uh, it pays for your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So that dividend portion is very important. So, but I would add now after the pandemic ex you know, experience I had during the pandemic that also the business ideally should have a strong balance sheet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is, that is basically the gist of your philosophy. My philosophy, uh, I mean, my philosophy not. actually more, more than that. Uh. Okay, but that is the, in a nutshell, would you say that? Uh, one of the nutshells. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll be able to like find out more of the nutshells that you have and pry them open yeah. on another time. Uh, yeah. But I think, uh, I think that's pretty much uh, yeah. we, what we have for you, uh, the questions that we have for you today. <laughs> yeah. you know, it, was, it was a pleasure having you back again. It's, it's been okay. so many years. I was just rambling. <laughs> yeah. Talking to yourself, right? Yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a voice in your head. No structure. <laughs> yeah. All right. So once again, you know, I hope you really enjoy, you know, this session with AK. We, I mean, for us, it's been a long time since we had you. Uh, and for those, you know, on our YouTube channel, uh, maybe this is the first time that you've me met AK online anyway. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's the guy that has, uh, I think over the many years, I guess, helped people be realistic about the way to invest. You know, yeah. do do things prudently, pragmatically, like you said, and be patient about the way things turn out. All right. So with that, I think uh, that's pretty much it, right, guys? Yeah. All yeah. right. So my name is Adam. This is Rosman. That is AK, AK. in disguise. Yeah. Um, and we 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 are so happy to have you here. Do check out his blog at uh, ASSI. You can just Google that ASSI. It's called a Singaporean Stocks Investor. He blogs there uh, every few, few, few times a month. Uh, he shares about his journey through investments as well. So with that, any questions for us, for AK, if we you know, if we can ask him some questions, we'll try to reply them on the comment section. Put them in the comment section, we'll try to help you out. Uh, of course, subscribe to our channel, many more long tips coming up, and we'd love to see you again. Thank you so much.